He would never hurt his friends, but his enemies, that might be another story. It's amazing that it's, he's still standing. He's been shot in the head. I think he's been stabbed. He's been hit in the head with baseball bats. Uh, you know, he's been shot at, in, you know, Vietnam. The Ugly Side of Life, the life story of Phil Ugly Mawson, a notorious bikey, the, the man who founded the Gypsy Joker Club. Tell me, how do you get kind of involved with a guy like that? We were filming a, a series called Houses. I needed bikey extras and uh, Phil or Ugly came in and um, he just, you know, he's got a very scary, intimidating look. You know, when I first met him, I was actually re really intimidated, but... Um, through maybe about four or five years, we became friends just from working on set. And then I got to know him and uh, despite his notorious background, he's not a bad bloke. For him to write this book with you and, and spill all his secrets about what happens in the Gypsy Jokers Club, how does that come about? You know, how do you gain his trust? What? How does that happen? He was keen to do a movie about his life or a TV series and uh, these producers kept falling through over and over and I just thought it was such a great story particularly the Vietnam aspects of his life, you know, and uh, that 70s part of the, that was kind of like, I guess, the, the glory days of bikies. I, I just sort of thought, well, okay, nobody's going to make a TV series or a movie about this. Which I, let's try a book. So I had a few cracks at writing it and um, didn't really do it justice. So I needed to team up with another writer and I feel like we've done a, a pretty good job and Phil's happy. And it's about Phil Mawson and his life as a kind of a boxer, a soldier, and then the bikey world and the, the amount of time that he spent in it and how it's changed, you know. What era do you reckon was the best, or the best years to be a, in the biker world? Well, when they didn't have breathalyzer, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Is he one of the toughest people you've ever met? Yeah, I would say so, 100%, like psychologically and the fact that he got it through all those injuries. I mean, he was shot in the head with a rifle, like in a, in a, in a party fight, like not, not even in Vietnam, let alone all the, uh, the stuff that he went through in Vietnam. Um, yeah, I've never seen anybody uh, who is prepared to just fight no matter what. Even if you know he's going to lose, he'll still fight, you know, because he's just old school like that. He, he told me that in the old days, for example, in an Australian pub, if you wanted to fight a guy, all you had to do was turn your, your glass over. That meant you wanted to fight. So the message... We should do a trick on the boys who are drinking the bar while they weren't looking. The glass empty, you turn it upside down and step back and say, yeah, what? Set him up. <laughs> and then you had to fight whoever challenged you or whatever. Yeah, because you know. challenged the bar. Did they fight in the pub? Well, they did in those days. Oh, yeah. There you go. Well, now, if you had the fight and you beat the guy, rather than, you know, cops coming and tasers and all the rest of it in court, the guy would get up and buy you a beer because you'd beaten him fair and square. Now, I've never seen that in a pub, but it's better than some of the outcomes I've seen recently. Just <laughs> saying, before the lockdown, Ugly does this crazy thing where if he gets into a fight, he... He always carries a, a, a mouth guard and he uses it a bit of a tactic to kind of uh, put off his opponent. So, but to this day, he still carries the mouth guard around. He's whatever he is, he's, he's 70 plus. And, and he still, you know, if you if you did the wrong thing by him, he, he wouldn't step back. He probably would throw a punch, you know. That's one thing you always got to remember. You get in a tight situation, the bloke calls you out or someone calls you out, you can't dog it, you've got to do it. So you step out. And the minute you step out, you pull out your mouth guard and you put it in your mouth and it gives that first reaction to them, they startle. They know, shit, I'm in for a fight. With that split second, you attack. You've got the advantage. So it's always good to carry your own mouth guard. Tell me, how does he get the, uh, how does he get the nickname Ugly? It goes back to when he was a boxer. He had a really ugly style of fighting. Um, my first fight I had in the ring, I was uh, 15. I fought an up-and-coming fighter. I won it, but um, all the Fairfield boys, because I used to knock around Fairfield, uh, they all come in and watch the fight. They all said, oh, that was the ugliest fight I've ever seen. So from then on, called nickname Ugly. To be honest, I didn't even want to make one cent uh, out of this book. I just wanted Ugly Story Told. He's like one of those characters out of those kind of 70s movies, you know, the anti-hero tough guy. I mean, I think it's just a great piece of Australian uh, subculture that you don't get to read about.